Hey everybody, Mr. Bowman here. This is another video for 3.14 probability distributions. This time around, we're looking at all the 2019 achieved questions. So let's get straight into question number one. And um, a bit of a giveaway, I've got the formula sheet next to us so we can look at it later on. Um, but So we've got some zucchinis. They are picked, so we, they're going to be more than 119 millimeters, um, a maximum of 270 millimeters, and the most common length of 220 millimeters. So straight away, because we've got a minimum, a maximum, and a mode, we know it's going to be a triangular distribution. So let's sketch this distribution. So there's my triangle. It's going to have, as we said, a minimum of 190, a maximum of 270, and coming down the middle, we're going to have a mode of 220. So using an appropriate distribution, so we've decided this is going to be a triangular distribution. Um, and it is good to jot it down in your exam because I do understand markers sometimes do look for that and it may make the difference between getting the mark or not. Um, estimate the probability of being less than 220. So this one's quite nice because 220 actually relates to the height of this triangular distribution. So we're not looking at any of these formulas here. We're looking at the little one over here. So our height is going to be equal to 2 over b minus a. So b minus a, we now just need to figure out what all the letters are. And remember, the minimum is always a, the maximum is always b, and c for most common sitting in the middle. So our height is going to be 2 over 270 minus 190, which is going to be 2 over 80. And when we simplify that a bit more, we're going to have 1 over 40. So we've now got the height. And because we're trying to find this area, that's just a triangle. The area of a triangle will always be one half of base times height. So that means the probability that x is less than 220, that's going to be equal to one half times base times height which is going to be equal to 1 half times our base. So you see our base is between 190 and 220. So that's got a base of 30. And then we're going to times it by the 1 40th. We calculated it to be the height of this triangle distribution. And if you plug that all into your calculator, you're going to get 0 0.375. So that wraps up the first one. This one was really nice because we ended up using the middle the mode formula, 2 over b minus a. However, if you've got the left or right slope, you are going to have to use those messier formulas, and there's a high risk of math errors happening for those. Okay, we are now on to question number two, and we've got data from last year's super corn crop, so information related to corn. We've got 62 corn in total, um, so that's going to be really important. The distribution of the corn is weighted below, um, so that's per cob and finally we've got for the starter we have a mean of this and a standard deviation of this it is claimed that over 10 percent of the corn um, have a yield of 120 grams of kernel is this claim claim correct so this um, information down below that's actually a bit of a red herring we're not asked to use a normal distribution model and we don't need to because we've actually got the raw data so that's what we're going to focus on here so the I guess the first question is um, how many corn were there in total? And we were given that information before up the top here, so that's 62. Of the 62, how many of them were over the 160 grams, which is in the question, claimed um, to be relevant to that 10% number? And if you have a look, it's going to relate to these bars here, which this bar looks like it's 7, and that bar there looks like it's 2, so that's going to be 9. So that means the probability that x is going to be greater than the 160 will be 9 over the 62. And if we convert that to a decimal, we're going to have 0 0.1452. I'm just noting because they're dealing with 10%, I'm going to flip this over to percentages. I normally don't, but it, it does make it a bit easier for these questions. And that's 14.52%. Oh, so that is much larger than this 10% claim. So because it says over 10%, this number is definitely over 10%. So we're happy with this claim made. So I'm then going to write a bit of a sentence. As the probability of x being larger than 130 is larger than 10%, we 
uh, whoops, I've started writing have. We are happy with this claim. Okay, so that wraps up this question. Um, a bit different. This was just kind of reading some numbers off a graph and doing a basic probability calculation. Okay, we are now on to question number three, and we've got the mean number of weeds um, per square meter in a suburban garden is known to be six. So that sounds like, um, I guess the word per gives it away. Maybe this is going to be a percent distribution question. And if that's the case, this mean is lambda, so that means we're going to have a lambda of six. Use an appropriate distribution model. Calculate an estimate for the probability of having more than eight weeds in a one meter squared of garden. So I guess the first thing to note, I'm definitely happy with my decision of a percent distribution question. So as I read the question, I try to think about, you know, what tool or formula am I going to use to help me with this? So I'm definitely happy with that. And I definitely know that lambda is equal to six. So I now have to think, how am I going to solve this question with my percent distribution? And with percent, because it's discrete data, I always do a bit of a number line just to help me break down the question. Hopefully your teacher taught you this as well. So I'm going to go to 11. Notice the question was relevant to 8. So I did 8 and then I did a little bit more. And this question has asked us for more than 8. So we're looking for this stuff here and every number beyond 11. Um, and we know percent distribution only really works from left to right. So that means we can't calculate this area by itself. We need to come up with another plan. So what I'm going to do is if I find the area of this section, I'm going to do 1 minus that area. And that will give me the remaining section, which is anything more than 9. So that's kind of my game plan for this one here. So, um, I so the probability of x being um, less than or equal to 8, that relates to this area here, is going to be equal to, and we need a lambda of 6 for this and an x of 8 for this. And I'll plug that into my b, um, so not b, my percent cumulative distribution mode on my calculator. Um, when you do that, you're going to get to 0 0.8472. Um, which is really, really nice. So now to find this area up the top here, as I noted, so the probability of it being more than 8 will be equal to 1 minus the probability that that we calculated above. So that's going to be 1 minus 0 0.8472, which is 0 0.158.28. There we go. I've got them the 2 and the 8 the wrong way around, but there we go. There's our right answer. So this was a 1 minus trick type question. Uh, really common in these exams, so hopefully it's something you're happy with. Also relevant for binomial distributions as well. Okay, we are now on to question four, which is the final achieved question from this exam. This exam was a bit messy. There's a few different ways you could have gone about it as well. But this relates to the weed killing type vibe that we had from question three. Um, so we've got organic weed killer, blah, 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 reduce the number of weeds. So it's observed there are 30 weeds in a one square, oh sorry, we're observing 30 square meter areas, and this is the number of weeds found out in each of those 30. So, for, you know, one of those square meters, we had 10, we had 8, we had 7, um, and so on. And we've been asked to calculate the mean number of weeds. So what, I guess what we need to do is we need to find out the total number of weeds that we found across the 30 square meters. And we're going to then divide it by 30 to find out the average per meter squared. So let's come up with a total. So using my bar graph, my chart over here, that was 1. That there was 5. Um, this here was 7. Nope, that there was 6. And then we had 7 over here. We had 5 again. Then we had 3. Then we had 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. So this is the total number of weeds we found or the total number per bar. So the number of weeds in particular to this bar, so for five occasions we found two weeds. So that means that bar actually represented by 10 weeds. So we need to multiply the x-axis number by the number of times that bar has occurred. So our total, let's start off, is going to be 1 times 1, which represents this bar, and then we're going to add on 5 times 2, 
which represents this bar. And we're going to repeat this process. So we're going to go 6 times 3. We're then going to add on 7 times 4. We're then going to add on 5 times 5. And then 6 times 3. And then 1 times 7. And then 1 times 8. And then finally 1 times the 10. So that's all my total. And if you do all that math, hopefully you're getting the same as me. 125 weeds in total. Now in terms of my average or my mean, so my mean is going to be the 125 weeds in total divided by the 30 meters square that we are looking at. And when I do that, I'm going to get 4.17 weeds per meter squared as my mean. So yeah, the other way you could have done that, you could have actually used quite a messy table um, and kind of like an expected number um, type calculation but it wasn't needed in the end for that so hopefully you found this video these questions helpful keep an eye out for the other probability distribution questions coming soon